Viewers like you make this program possible. Support your local PBS station. I am in Asturias, in the northern part of Spain. Today we will visit the caves where they make a very special cheese. We'll taste some amazing almond pastries. Man, those are good. We'll make a delicious tapa my mother taught me to make when I was a little boy. And we'll drink cider with my family in the traditional way. I am Jose Andres and this is Made in Spain. Today we are in Asturias, a region that is so close to my heart because this is where I was born. Asturias is full of history, but it's also known as the land of cheeses, because it produces so many delicious cheeses that are now popular all over the world. One of the best is called Cabrales. Mm. Come, let's go back to my place in Washington where I will cook a delicious dish with this fascinating cheese. So we're gonna start grabbing a good piece of these cabrales right now. Mm. I love the smell of this blue cheese. Wow, beautiful. You see, it's so creamy. And we get an apple. Here, we're gonna be using a Granny Smith. Actually, this apple, because it has a natural acidity, resembles very much the apples that we find in my home region, in Asturias. So. Let's go with this one. First, we're gonna take the heart out, okay? And now, the easy part, use to peel the apple. And now the only thing we need to do is, oh, slice it with the help of a knife, like this. Oh, even better, we go to the shop, we buy this affordable mandolin, and with this, we can slice anything we want, and especially apples in perfect slices, like this. And now we are ready to make the dressing, simple and quick. We are talking about apples. We are in Asturias, probably the kingdom of apples. Well, we're gonna be using a cider vinegar. Here, perfect. We put more or less, you know, one part of vinegar, always, for more or less every three parts of olive oil. Hey, obviously, Spanish, huh? Now a touch of salt right here. Perfect. And the only thing we need to do is start mixing. And I think we're gonna put a touch of black pepper. Why not? We get the plate, we put the apples in the bottom of the plate, artistically, and now we are gonna cover the apples with this very simple, quick dressing, like this. Mm. Now we're gonna put some pieces of the cheese all on top of the apples, all right? As much as you like. And take a look how this cheese crumbles, but at the same time, it's so, so buttery. And now, a magic touch. I love almonds, and today I have a very special almond. It's from Spain, of course, and we call it Marcona. They're so good, and more when they are roasted. And now, with the help of a microplane like this, we're gonna get some of these almonds, you see? And what we're gonna do is to grate them on top. You know, actually, we could put the almonds whole, but I love to use things like almonds and walnuts like a natural salt. Look at, we're gonna be kind of grating the almonds so, so, so small that all of a sudden 
they're going to be not crunchy anymore, but they are going to be giving this very unique, nutty, almost vanilla flavor to the entire salad. We put all this on top of the salad, nicely, slowly, like this. And now for the final touch, you know, I got these beautiful chive blossoms. So we're going to put some of these flowers right on top. Mmm. And now why not? We have some of these tips of the chives, like this. And let's also put them around. Oof, oof. This salad is good, but the cheese alone, <laughs> the cheese alone is worth a trip. You know what? I think you and I, we're gonna go right now back to Spain, to Asturias, and I'm gonna show you where the history of Cabrales cheese begins. I am in the northern part of Spain, in the region of Asturias, where I was born. And actually, I am in a very important place for all the Asturianos. I am in the sanctuary of Covadonga. In that cave that you see from here was found over 12 centuries ago, the Virgin of Covadonga that become the symbol of the local people. But Covadonga has many more meanings. From these mountains is where Don Pelayo, the first king of Asturias, fought against the Moorish invaders for first time. At, at the personal level, also is very important to me because it's where my mother and father were married over 38 years ago. Underneath these mountains are many caves, and those caves are used for a very special thing. Well, I am in the town of Arenas de Cabrales. We can say is the Cabrales cheese capital of the world. And around all this area is where you find the caves where they will mature the Cabrales cheese. It's almost 17 caves dedicated to maturing the cheese. Wow. Don't tell me this is not a fascinating cave. Those are the natural caves I'm telling you about. And they're very unique because they have the right humidity. And especially the penicillium that will make blue cheese anywhere in the world. Take a look. This cheese is four months old. It's already mature to perfection. Inside we can see all the green kind of caves all inside the cheese of the penicillium transforming the beautiful milk into this precious piece of jewelry. And here we have a cheese that is only one month old. Can you see? The inside is very compacted, it's not as creamy, it's still very white. And the penicillium is trying to get from the outside, the same penicillium surrounding these caves, into the inside. Once it gets to the inside, cheese is ready. And this is the cheese of the three milks. So it's the Rolls Royce of Cabrales cheese. Mmm. Un poquito más. You know, I'm gonna eat some more Cabrales. And I think from the heart of the mountains, I'm gonna be taking you to the heart of Asturias. Con la mano levanta, al pasado le digo adiós, y el futuro que vendrá, dicen que pende de un hilo, y el presente... And walking through the streets of Oviedo, I love to get inside these kind of shops that it seems time has never passed, especially this one. This shop is called Camilo de Blas. The main thing here is a pastry called Carballones. Me dan una cajita de Carballones. Carballones are a pastry that was invented here, gracias, in this shop in 1924. They are made out of almonds, egg yolk, and sugar. And you can say that today, 
Carballón is, is the official pastry of Oviedo. The name Carballón, well, let's say it was an ancient oak tree that was cut down at the end of the 19th century. And in honor of the oak tree, they decide to call it Carballones. Actually, every person from Oviedo um, are a Carballón. You know, I am kind of a Carballón myself. Man, those are good. Well, everywhere you look in Asturias, you will find apple orchards. Why? Because the climate is the perfect one. Those apples will make wonderful, refreshing, sweet cider. You know, Asturias is all about farming. Actually, around here, we can see corn fields and so many others, especially corn is gonna surprise you. Why? Well, because corn is not original from Europe. Corn came from America. Well, corn today, because Asturias is so green, grows perfectly here. They will use it for feed the cows, but also they will use it in certain dishes like breads and etc. This building is called an Oreo, a very characteristic square plan with those pillars that somehow separate the building from the floor, trying to protect whatever crop was inside from humidity, but also obviously from any animals trying to eat whatever was inside. Actually, I think you and I, we're gonna go back home right now, and I'm gonna do one dish that uses corn in a very interesting way. Today you find a lot of recipes in Asturias, precisely that use corn. And that's what we're gonna be making today, tortos. But before we get to this beautiful kind of corn fry bread, let's start cooking the onions first. All right. And now what we're gonna be doing is simply cooking the onions slowly. And they need like, I would say, 40, 45 minutes. Why? Because we want them caramelized. We want that all the sugar that is inside the onion really turns into caramel. While the onions cook, we are gonna start prepping right now the tortos. And here we have very fine corn flour and whole wheat flour. All right, we are rolling. Now we need half teaspoon of the baking powder, okay? Like this. So we're gonna put in three quarts of a cup of water, like this. And let's mix it all quick until we don't have any lumps, okay? And you see you go mixing and take a look how very quick the flour absorbs the water. And now we have like, a dough that is somehow wet. You're gonna see that somehow it sticks to your fingers. All right, that's the moment we want it. But now, every good thing in life needs to rest. We love a nap and we wake up from the nap feeling great. Well, ingredients in cooking that are not any different. We're gonna give this dough five, 10 minutes to relax. And the onion, I think the onion is doing good. And you know, as you cook the onions and some of them, the sugars, start caramelizing, well, sometimes some are gonna be very white, others already very brown. You are afraid that everything is getting burned. Don't worry. We need to add a little bit of water, like this. And it's gonna help us to be achieving a nicer and browner color without burning the onions. That's important, okay? These onions are really, really ready. Caramelize the smellies. Ah, worth the wait. And now, we've been talking about Asturias, we are talking about cider. This one is carbonated. I love this sound. It's always a sound of celebration. And we are almost ready to go. We leave it here, use reducing, because I think the bread is already calling me. All right, and now, you're gonna make a little bowl like this. Not too big, not too small. And then, with a plastic wrap, like if we were making Mexican tortillas. And now, very carefully, we go in 
to the oil, not too hot, not too cold, around 325, 330. We want to make sure that we cook it slowly, it puffs up, becomes soft inside, crisping the outside. This is ready when at the end almost you see no more bubbles. So this one is ready. And let's cook the eggs. We get one or two eggs. And we are gonna do like a scramble eggs. But you know why those eggs are gonna be so good? Well, obviously because the quantity of onion and the cider, but precisely because the proportions we are gonna make. Eggs versus onion. Almost is gonna be as much onion as eggs. This way you will always have a scramble eggs. <sighs> like the best ones anyone can make, I'm telling you. All right, a touch of salt. No much, no little. We add the eggs right now, all right? And we keep moving like this, heavy, heavy, heavy. We don't want them to get too, 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 too scrambled. You see? We keep moving, we keep moving. And take a look of the texture of these eggs. They are creamy, they are juicy. We take them out of the pan. Oh, they smell so good. But if we get these tortos and we put the eggs with the onion on top, what can I tell you? Simple ingredients, eggs, onions, cider, and corn, that somehow they become sublime. And you know, you don't have to do it, but we have this Cabrales cheese. And let's put a piece on top of each one. And you know, these dishes, these aromas somehow will obviously remind me of, of home. Let's go. As I told you before, cornfields are everywhere in Asturias. And for many centuries, corn has been used to grow another very special plant. Do you see this kind of a plant that I don't belong here kind of thing? Take a look. It starts right there and keeps climbing using the corn almost to touch the sky. This plant is a bean plant. Beans are grown here right now. Actually, we can see the beautiful flowers that will give birth to tiny bean pods tiny bean pods that will start growing and growing and growing until they become a very big pod with a, I will say, almost gigantic white bean. This white bean, we can say, is um, the queen of Asturias cooking because we make an astonishing dish. Hmm. I think I'm gonna show it to you. And with those beans, actually in Asturias, you will see hundreds of different dishes being made with lobster, with different kinds of fish, shellfish, chicken, but especially the national dish in Asturias with those beans will be a dish called fabada asturiana. Pork and beans united in the same pot to make an astonishing dish. No one cooks that dish better than my friend Nacho Manzano in Casa Marcial. Pasa, Nacho! Como estamos, hombre? We are lucky because, you know, in Asturias, every day is the pot with the beans and they are making the dish. Mm. You see, this is an homage to the products from the garden, the beans that you and I, we saw, and the products from the farm, blood sausage, morcilla, and the chorizo. As you see, this is the bacon we use in America, you know, salt bacon, but take a look at the meat and the white parts. Mm -hmm. And this, which is uh, lacon. lacon, but it's kind of a ham, cured ham. He loves to add pimenton, the Spanish paprika, and the saffron that gives very characteristic color, but more important, flavor and aroma. So you saw the, the, the water 
so liquid and so unflavorful now has this kind of a very silky texture. All the flavors of the black sausage, the chorizo, the lacon, the cured ham, the bacon, the onion, kind of are in the water. This water now becomes... Wow! Mm. And take a look at these beans, how soft they are. They are like butter. In the moment I squeeze them, kind of they fall apart. So the beans in one side, but the other things, the blood sausage, the morcilla, the bacon is called the compango. And let's say that some people love the beans and some people love the meats. Me, I love both. The best place to end a day in Asturias, for me, is in the town where I was born, Mieres. You remember all the apples, orchards I show you? With those apples, we make cider. And cider is always a reason for celebration. Well, this square is called El Requejo, and all the vitality of Mieres happens here. Let me introduce you my family. Well, actually, I'm not gonna introduce them because they're way too many, <laughs> way too many. Hombre, ¿cómo estamos? Hola. Oye, un poco más contento de que me veáis, hostia, ¿esto qué es? Hola, hola. Hola. Where I am, it's what is called a sidrería, or a hard cider place. And here, the only thing you do is pour in cider. And drink in cider, non-stop. Take a look at this. You see, the bottle has to be very, very high because you want some kind of um, uh, fishiness in the cider. So when you throw it from high above, it hits against the glass and creates this kind of a fishiness. You see, you need to drink it very quick. If you don't drink it quick, <laughs> the guy that poured the cider is going to get upset with you. Mm. And now, very important, the remaining in the glass, you throw it to the floor. And this glass, you'll pass it to the next person. And the next person. Oh, yeah, muy bien. Well, you know, here my uncle Lito jokes because he says I am from Asturias, and I don't know how to pour. You know, this is difficult. I mean, imagine, you need to go up high. You need to let the whole thing drop. You need to catch the stream into this tiny glass. Are you crazy? I mean, I you know, I rather prefer he does it. Una para mi. You need to be smart about it, right? But the best part, I think, is what you see here. Friends, family, having good time together, having good food together. And what else can you ask in life? Family and cider. I am Jose Andres, and this is Made in Spain. Adelantando que no adelantándote, el uno suma el número, el número uno, pa' que el primero, pa' que con estar es suficiente para mí. Uno más que en uno menos, sumando, sembrando, pensando en lo que voy a hacer. Uno más, pero con nombre y apellidos, tirando de la cuerda siempre hacia adelante. Ay.